Are you suffering at the hands of a narcissist? Do you often wonder, what would Jesus do? Well, in today's video, we're going to talk about how Jesus handled narcissists. Well, hey, my friend, in case we haven't met yet, my name is Chris Reese, and if you are looking for biblical solutions to life's tough challenges, go ahead and click that subscribe and notification button so you don't miss a thing. When asked, most people, even Christians, would say that Jesus' main qualities were meekness and mildness, and someone who taught us to turn the other cheek when evil is perpetuated against us. But would Jesus understand that we have narcissists today that wreak havoc in our lives? Well, the answer is yes. And narcissism may be the catchphrase of the day, but it is nothing new. Self-centered, egotistical, evil people have been around since the beginning of creation. And Jesus did not mean that we are to let people do whatever they want to us. Rather, we should say that God will handle it. But while you're waiting, let's take a look at how Jesus handled narcissists in the moment. Number one, he ignored them. Narcissists have a way of creating drama everywhere they go, whether it's the attention-seeking overt narcissist or the woe-is-me covert narcissist. There's always drama that points the attention to them. And the Pharisees were a classic example of narcissism at its finest. With their pious attitude and their constant correcting, the Pharisees were always looking to stir up trouble to criticize Jesus. Well, isn't that just like a narcissist to go out of their way to point out your flaws to make themselves look good? And the same thing happened to Jesus in Matthew 9, starting in verse 10. And Jesus was reclining at the table in the house. Many tax collectors and sinners came and were dining with Jesus and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, why is your teacher eating with the tax collectors and sinners? But when Jesus heard this, he said, it is not those who are healthy who need a physician, but those who are sick. You see, Jesus didn't take the bait. The Pharisees were trying to create a smear campaign and Jesus chose to ignore them. Instead, he focused on his mission. Number two, he called them out. You think Jesus always had kind words to say? <laughs> think again. The Pharisees were a hypocritical bunch that Jesus took several opportunities to call out. And one of my favorites is found in Matthew 23, starting in verse 29. And he says, woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you build the tombs of the prophets and adorn the monuments of the righteous and say, if we had been living in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partners with them in shedding the blood of the prophets. Narcissists are classic scoffers and judges. They love to appear superior to others. So remember, the narcissist is all about the image. So you want to be like Jesus? When the time is right, don't hesitate to call out narcissistic behavior. Just be careful. Because we often think that because we call something out, then that means it's going to change. It often didn't for Jesus, and it likely won't for us either. Number three, he cut them off. Jesus was not opposed to going no contact. And I have to imagine for as many people as Jesus helped, there were several more that he just walked away from for many reasons. And he even taught this mindset to his disciples. Join with me again in Matthew chapter 10, starting in verse 12. And Jesus was preparing to send out the 12 disciples, giving them, an, uh, the, giving them the authority to drive out impure spirits and heal every disease. And here's what he said. As you enter the home, give your greeting. If the house is deserving, let your peace rest on it. If it is not, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, leave that home or town and shake the dust off your feet. Verse 16, I am sending you out like sheep among wolves. Therefore, be shrewd as snakes and innocent as doves. But you may be asking, what about prayer? Didn't Jesus tell us to pray for our enemies? He sure did. But here's where I want you to be careful. If you struggle with any form of codependency, it's likely that you continue to try to love the narcissist. But in reality, you're simply perpetuating the evil they're causing. 
1 John 5.16 is clear when it says, if you see a brother or sister commit a sin that does not lead to death, you should pray and God will give them life. I refer to those whose sin does not lead to death. There is a sin that leads to death. I am not saying that you should pray about that. So when referring to the sin that leads to death, the Bible is referring to the sin that a person is willfully and habitually continuing in. Narcissists rarely show any genuine repentance. So be careful for how you are loving and even praying for this person. It is possible, my friend, to live in peace. Don't let the narcissist distract you from your purpose. Call out their evil behaviors, cut off the relationship when necessary, and you too can live in peace. Are you struggling with a narcissist or any type of toxic person in your life? Well, I want to invite you to grab our free Toxic People Survival Guide. I'll go ahead and include a link in the description section below. And perhaps you're looking for more, more help in learning how to identify and deal with these difficult people. I want to encourage you to jump on over to our website. I will go ahead and include a link in the description section below. There in the student section, you will find several courses, several on how to deal with toxic people. And one, we have a workshop that is coming up on how to heal from a toxic mother. My aim is to help you restore your life through faith. So I'll go ahead and include a link in the description section below for those courses. Well, my friend, that's all the time that we have for today. Until next time, remember, all things are possible with God. Thank you for watching Christian Life TV. Remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Also, help us to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ and build believers all around the world. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly partner with Chris Reese Ministries by clicking on the donate link now.